Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for being here. You know China yeah. very well. Uh, is, is this as strong a position for President Xi as it looks for those of us on the outside? It is. Um, he's been working on this for some time. He's very shrewd. He's very smart. Um, and frankly, I think a lot of uh, people within China in the, in the Communist Party uh, don't mind this uh, because he is a good symbol for Chinese strength in China and worldwide. Uh, in addition, you know, all leaders want to keep their jobs. He's no different. And what does he do? He keeps the people happy. How does he keep the people happy? He makes sure their incomes keep going up. He addresses air pollution. He addresses water pollution, uh, uh, health concerns. Um, he's, 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 he's doing a pretty good job. And, and frankly, I think we Americans unwittingly are helping him be strong because of all the public criticism that, that we as Americans have, uh, uh, send that way toward China. And, and that, that emboldens the hawks in China, and that enables him to consolidate power. Well, talk about consolidating power, because I wonder about one thing. In, in past regimes, obviously, the president has been very, very powerful. But you've heard a lot of reporting about people around whoever the president was. This time, increasingly, it appears that it is President Xi and just about nobody else. Is he consolidating in that way as well, that it really he is really running the ship almost by himself? Well, he is. Um, and frankly, I think it's a bit concerning. I noticed at the various summits that I attended with the President Obama and, and Xi that uh, the people next to Xi uh, were not his foreign policy people, rather they were his, his, inter, his, his inner sanctum. And lo and behold, at the next uh, selection of members of the Standing Committee for the Politburo, the top uh, body, Sure enough, those people were, were named to the Politburo. So the people he talks to, the Standing Committee of Seven, are really his people. And um, it's a danger that he's, he, he's, he's too uh, not, not able to hear enough from the outside. That's a real, that's a real problem. Uh, many people think that that relationship between the United States and China may be the most important one going forward. Uh, how well do we understand the inner workings of the leadership of China? And are we losing some of our ability? There's a report in Bloomberg just this week suggesting that about 10 years ago we lost some of our intelligence capability. And it's more of a black box than it has been before. It is, and it's very unfortunate. When I was serving there, I'd ask a lot of questions of our, of our intelligence service, and I was surprised that they did not get answered. They did not know. In fact, they would ask me in my meetings with um, not only President Xi, but others, to try to garner certain information so that they, the intelligence committee, could have better information. It's, it's very, very difficult. Now, having said that, it is true we have certain capabilities in China, which I clearly can't discuss here, but um, it's difficult. It's quite uh, it's hard. And part of it is, too, is just the nature of the Communist Party. It's almost impenetrable. When I was over there, you know, as an American, trying to form relationships with people, get to know each other, talk about our kids and wives and so forth. When I started to ask questions about um, government, about policy, man, it was just a stonewall. I got nowhere. That's China. It's very, very difficult. So with that preface, Ambassador Baca, is to take us into what we think is going to be a virtual summit between President Biden and President Xi next week. Uh, how does that come about? What is the relative position of the two parties? Because President Xi is coming off of this strengthening of his power, if anything, while President Biden has had something of a setback, particularly when it comes to those elections last Tuesday. I think it's a very, very important uh, development that the two are talking to each other and will be next week. Number one, it's very important for uh, President Biden to show that America's strong. Uh, we're coming back. We're good. You know, build back better means build back better for America, too, because the more we are perceived as strong in the Chinese eyes, uh, the more able we're able to uh, affect policy with respect to China. The Chinese um, smell strength better than do any other people. They can sense weakness better than any other people. So number one, we got to keep showing we're strong. And frankly, it's not just words, it's actions. And number two, it's very important for President Biden to kind of, kind of help clear the air over Taiwan. Um, I, I think that, um, that, that it, we're coming dangerously close to some kind of a, a hair trigger point where China could do something very untoward with respect to Taiwan. Why? Because there's so much public criticism in the United States against China, so much uh, uh, policy in the United States, especially in Congress, in favor of Taiwan. And I, I think it's very important for Biden to say, hey, 
We support the one China policy. We support the communica Shanghai communiques to put China at ease. And it's also important not only for Xi to hear that, it's important for the hawks in the United States to hear that. Can we at this point, given where we are in the relationship, can we deliver that message? Can President Biden deliver that message without implicitly saying to President Xi, and by the way, if you want to really move forward on Taiwan, we're not going to stand in your way? Well, clearly he can. Um, I, I know one instance where President <clears throat> Obama uh, did that with respect to China. Uh, as, frankly, it's my idea. I just said to the Mr. President, if you just stand up to President Xi on this particular point, make it clear to him that he, and do this privately, not publicly, in a small room as possible, make it very clear to him if China goes where we don't want them to go, that China will suffer consequences, very dire consequences. And you, President Xi, better not go there. It can be done. It's got to be done privately. It's got to be done in a way where he knows, she knows that we mean what we say. We're going to back up what we say. So, so Ambassador Baucus, assuming this virtual summit happens the way it's been predicted, what do you think the best thing coming out of that would be? I mean, it, we're not, obviously not going to fix everything in one summit, but how could we take concrete steps forward? Mutual respect. Um, is, the result is that, hey, sure, we, uh, we have our issues. We, with China, uh, we, we can give the long list, but we respect China. China's a country, um, just like we're a country, and want China to respect us. So we have to, both presidents have to say things that show that we do respect each other, and also that we're not going to publicly criticize each other as much as we have. China's not going anywhere. China's always going to be there. We have to deal with China. We may not like it. We may not like it as being more repressive. We may not like it as being more closed, but it's not going anywhere. We have to deal with it. And I, I think that with more that President Biden can convey that message to President Xi, that is, we know you're there. We know we got to deal with you. But well, here's here are our issues so, so that they're talking more like adults. But keep it keep a lot of this private because if more it goes public, then if more of this public goes, there's a Man, it causes more problems than it solves. And, and finally, Ambassador Baucus, I want to come back to the United States. I mean, you won your fair share and more of elections during your time. We had those elections last Tuesday in the United States, and I think many people think that the Democratic Party really took a hit, a bad hit. Is it as bad as it looks? And if so, what is your advice about how it can turn this around? Um, frankly, President Biden, I think, is doing a pretty good job. But uh, President Biden and Democrats just, frankly, we got to get our act together. <laughs> that means um, stop squabbling, uh, agree on what Build Back Better is, and get it passed. Move forward. People in America care about a lot of things. They care about leadership in Washington. They don't like all the squabbling that goes on. That make, that's a big, big problem. They also want um, their incomes to go up. They like to see Washington doing things that, hey, kind of boost our incomes a little bit, deal a bit with health care, uh, deal a little bit with, uh, with, with some of the issues, education, other issues we're facing. Just be organized. You give a single message, don't stop fighting, and just do the best you can and, and listen to people. Connect with people. People know when you're when you're really trying to connect. People know when you're really listening and you're really trying to do the right thing. They know. And start, this is not a science. This is not difficult. It's just doing it. <laughs> and that's what got you almost 36 years in the Senate. It's understandable. Thank you so much for being with us today. That's former Ambassador to China, Max Baucus.